We're gonna go into our top five picks with a bonus style. Not five, we're picking six. <laughs> Did you say six? <laughs> well, it is six. Well, it's one. Okay, sorry. Hey, Herd, Quiddy here. And I'm Cam. We're gearheads here at Backcountry. Today, we're gonna talk you through the 23 24 ski top picks. And we've got them broken out into five different categories. We've got them timestamped in the video. So feel free to jump ahead to whatever category interests you most. All right, let's hop in. So for one of our top picks this year in the carving category, we've got the Black Rose Mirrors Core. When it comes to the Mirrors Core, Quiddy, how does the ski, where do you ski it? Tell us a little bit about the ski itself. This ski is gonna excel uh, in frontside conditions. It's essentially turning the resort into a arcing carving little course. Um, it has a soft to medium flex, giving the rider the ability to just absolutely destroy some corduroy. What about the radius and what are we talking for waist numbers? The radius on this ski is a little bit shorter. It's a 13 meter radius, gives you that snappy left to right feel when you're riding it. It's got this deep side cut to it. So we go from 87 to 134 millimeters in the side cut. When you press into this ski, it's going to respond really well with a soft to medium flex allows you to round out that turn and with that 13 meter radius, you're gonna go left to right pretty quickly. It's gonna feel really snappy and playful and fun. With the profile of the ski, we can kind of see that we've got camber underfoot as well as some rocker in both the tip and tail. That with a more center mount line on the ski. What are your impressions of it? How does it ski? How do those things in combination suit the rider. Yeah, so giving it a little bit more camber underfoot gives that poppier feel. So when you press into the ski, you're gonna get that responsiveness, but having a little bit of tip and tail rocker allows it to release and enter the turn with a little bit of ease. Also with a shovel that's a 134 at the tip of the ski allows it to float in conditions that are not just pure front side. You can get a little off piece. You can play around a little bit of that soft snow. It's best suited on harder pack or corduroy, but there's enough versatility in the shape of the ski for you to be able to you know, take it off piece and still have a good time. That's awesome. Like being able to take a ski anywhere on the mountain, I think is what me as a skier I'm looking for. Right. I notice that this ski has a Tetanol mounting plate underfoot. You mentioned it's a softer flex. What does that mounting plate, that stiffer metal underfoot do for the rider? Yeah, first off, that mounting plate's gonna give you that security that your bindings are gonna hold, but it's also gonna give you a stable platform and a nice, stronger under center of the foot feel to the ski. So when you press into it, it's gonna give you that responsiveness. That plus the camber, when you press into a hard turn, you're gonna get that feedback immediately with that mounting plate. The last feature that I'll call out is that they, they designed this ski with a little playful swallowtail. Ultimately, that's a, a benefit to the rider in that it's going to give you a little bit of that softer release at the end of the turn. Um, it's going to allow that tail to kind of cut around and get away from it. It also just looks super cool. So love the shape of the ski, love the top sheet. It's got that plastic black crows crows on there. Um, the bright orange is popping. I'd probably mount this up with a, a look pivot or uh, a marker griffin or something of the nature. Yeah, versatile all mountain carver. We've talked a lot about versatility. We've talked a lot about the actual tech specs of the ski. In your words, Quiddy, who is this ski for? This is for the rider that uh, he wakes up at 6 a.m., gets to the resort on a total bluebird day and it hasn't been snowing for a really long time and wants to just go rip on the cord and wants to, to make some turns in that kind of in-between high pressure systems where there hasn't been fresh snow. They're going to have a blast. It's going to essentially give you something to do before you wait for that next big snow dump. It's also going to be that ski for that ex racer who wants to see, have a little bit of play uh, and wants to go edge to edge. I would recommend this ski to, to anybody who likes to make turns, to be honest. Sounds like a fun ski. Can't wait to get out on it more this winter. That was our carving category. Moving into our next category of all mountain. We're introducing the new Mantra M6 from Vocal. Cody, what's your first impressions? The name Mantra has been in the vocal line for a really long time and for good reason. It's a legacy model that they've built a incredible following behind and it's a, it's a great platform that they just keep iterating, iterating, they keep adding tech to. And the Mantra is gonna make you a better skier. It's the ski, the all mountain ski that I reach for on any day. It's a model of ski that's gonna do anything from skiing on piste and on corduroy, you can, you can arc hard turns with it. You can get off piste, you can get into the pow, you can do a lot of things with this ski. It handles crud really well. It's built off of a stable platform and it's one of my favorite skis in the line. 
Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite things about the mantra too, is it's been around for so long, they've tested it, they've proven it, and they've really refined it. And like what he said, it's gonna make you a better skier. It's a little bit stiffer than what we've reviewed so far, but that is just you know equating to something that wants to go fast and wants to push you as a skier out on the hill. Quiddy talking about some of the specs on this thing. Let's go through tip, tail, and waist widths. So the M6 mantra comes with a 96 underfoot waist, which is a kind of this new normal for all mountain that's sub 100, anywhere from 90 to 100, especially out here in the Rockies. If you're on the East Coast, we know that you're uh, you're partial to a little bit sub 90. But uh, in that 96 waist width with 136 at the tip and 119 in the tail, uh, it's got enough side cut to be able to arc those turns, but then it has enough tip width in the, in the tip and tail to be able to float in a little bit of a softer snow condition. How does the profile play into that all mountain approach to the ski? With the profile of this ski, it's a traditional camber underfoot with tip and tail rocker. It's just enough camber to give you that pop and enough responsiveness when you push into the ski. It doesn't require the skier to press into it extremely hard for it to go left and right. It ultimately has been built with a uh, construction profile of a Tetanol frame. You've got Tetanol under the foot, you've got this 3D frame um, on the tip and tail that allows the ski to be stiffer um, right at the actuation points of the turn, right where the side cut kind of tapers off into the tip and tail, uh, which gives you a lot of stability when you're going left and right, uh, as well as giving you that kind of powerful strength that you want in an all-mountain ski. Yeah, what I'm hearing from the construction to the profile, the rocker camber mix, and down to their 3D radius side cut. Basically, this ski will go fast when you want it to go fast, and it will turn when you want it to turn. They've put a lot of thought into how the ski performs in a variety of situations yeah. to really give you this super refined model. Who's it for? This is for everybody. This is this ski will make you a better skier, to be honest. It's a ski that I grew up on some, and I, I always reach for it. It's still in my closet, so uh, I love the mantra. It's a bestseller for a reason. Um, it's a ski that uh, it's going to take you places, and you're going to never feel like you regretted picking these out when you go out for a day on the mountain. Rad. Yeah, I think there's a bit of chatter out there in the world that vocals your dad's ski, but with these new models, the new Mantra M6, this thing performs under anybody's feet, and it's fast and fun, and you're not going to have a bad day out on this thing. Our next category is powder skis. This is a fun one for us here in Utah because of the winter we just had in the 22-23 season. A lot of powder skiing to be had. So we're excited to introduce an update and a new Ben Shetler 120. Yeah, the Ben Shetler 120, best seller for us. At a 120 underfoot, you'd think that this is purely meant to be skiing in deep snow conditions. And that's where it's having the most fun and you're having the most fun. But this thing's more versatile than uh, you may believe. It's extremely playful. Um, it's got probably the best top sheet for this season. Um, it's just been running it back every single year with kind of just game-changing top sheet yeah, love, design. Yeah, love the graphics that they partner with Chris Benchettler himself to create just stunning skis. You're getting a radius of about 19 meters. The waist is 120. The tip and tail are a little bit wider than that even, so you feel like you're just floating out there. They're extremely light. This thing actually makes a great switch hitter touring ski. Slap a shift binding on this or even a, a tech binding on this and you're going to have a great day in the backcountry. It's a moderate turn radius at that 19, so it gives you that length to kind of splay out and make that long surfing turn, but it also can go left to right extremely nimbly. It's got full tip and tail rocker with a little camber underfoot so that you get that pop in the ski, but then you're going to be able to float left and right really easy release from the turn. It's just that ski that does everything. It's got a somewhat sandwich cap construction design that ultimately does a couple of things. It lowers the swing weight near the tip and tail so that the ski is extremely nimble. You can go left to right, it feels super surfy. Underfoot, you get that burly sidewall kind of right where you're going to be maybe bashing into rocks or going left and right and, and kind of clinking them together. You're going to have a little bit more stability there. With powder skis, right, you think of a softer, more maneuverable, yet fatter ski. The previous skis that we've looked at so far today all have included some layer of some form of metal. Mm -hmm. This ski does not. So let's talk about the construction of this. They utilize uh, poplar core, wood core, with a carbon laminate. 
What do those two materials do for the ride of the ski? By removing a lot of metal from the ski, there is a little in the, like underneath the foot for a binding plate, but it's not really meant to change the performance. Ultimately, by removing metal in this ski and keeping it more of that wood feel, you're going to get more of this like consistent progressive flex. It's not going to be as tight and as, as hard pressured as like having tetanol or a metal top sheet. You're not going to have to push it as much to get it to kind of bend around the corner. Um, it makes it more nimble. It makes it lighter. In conditions where you're, you're dealing with extremely hard pack or, or tough crud, like you're going to get some reverb. You're going to get some feedback from that. But ultimately, this ski actually handles those conditions reasonably well. It performs much better than expected when at first glance and when you pick it up for how light it is. And that carbon laminate also, 100%. while it adds some stiffness without sacrificing weight, it dampens that. So when you're exactly. not out skiing blower pal on this thing and you have to you know, get across a, a traverse or cross a groomer, you're not gonna be getting chattered away. That carbon laminate's gonna dampen it out. One of the other pieces of construction that the Atomic Bed Shetler has is the Horizon Tech. It's actually this kind of spoon shape to the tip. It does a number of things. It allows the ski to float in powder pretty easily. It also lightens up the tip. Again, it helps that swing weight, allows the ski to be nimble. It also just looks really cool. It's kind of this spoon shape to it, um, but that's the Horizon Tech component. So they've added to the what has historically been the Bent Chetler 120 a couple seasons ago. They added the Bent 110, the Bent 100, the Bent 90, as well as the Bent 85. Kind of have your your big fat pow ski and then an iteration of that style of ski for any conditions and any skier. Exactly. And the top sheets all kind of have a similar vibe to them. Each ski is constructed in a different way. We don't have those here today. We're only calling up the 120, but check the site. Those are also best sellers that we've got. Cody, who's this ski for? Oh man, this ski is for, for those optimists out there that believe that it's gonna snow a lot. But also, if, you, if it doesn't snow a lot and you get this ski, you're not gonna be sad. You can ski it anywhere on the mountain. It's kind of this like, could be a park ski, could be a carving ski but it is a powder ski for sure. Awesome. Well, that's our top pick, the Ben Shetler 120, rounding out the powder category. So we've done carving, we've done all mountain, we've done powder, and now we're on to our next category, free ride. Free ride, in my opinion, is something similar to powder skiing. It's kind of the dream when you go free riding is yep. to find awesome lines and fresh snow. But we'd love to introduce now, our top pick for the free ride category, the Armada ARV 116 JJ. Kind of keeping up with the trend of awesome graphics. We've got an amazing new graphic out of Armada this year. And to match, as you can tell, the base. So when you're getting crazy, free riding around the mountain, you can show people your stuff. Definitely giving the Ben Shetler a run for its money on the top sheet this year. It's one of those skis that for that skier, for that free ride skier who wants to be loose and powerful with how they ski and they want their own style, this is the tool that gives you that ability. The profile we've got on the JJ is actually surprisingly, you're gonna get a, a decent amount of camber underfoot, but you're gonna get a ton of tip and tail rocker. That tip and tail rocker is gonna happen fast. It's gonna rise up pretty quickly. That's gonna give you a ton of, of ability to be nimble and, and playful with this ski. It's gonna surf extremely well. That camber underfoot though is gonna give you that bounce, that pop, so that when you are making those transitions, hip transitions, you're turning the mountain into a park, like you're gonna be able to, to get some boost and some power out of that camber underfoot. It's also gonna give you that nice landing platform to, to play with. And construction wise, again, kind of building off the conversation around the Bent Chetler, we don't see any stiffer metals in this ski. This is definitely a softer ski, right. meant to be more playful and turn that, like you said, quiddy, the, the free ride or the backcountry into a playground. 100%. So with a poplar and ash material core base, uh, this ski is going to let that wood breathe. And what has been amazing that Armada's like figured out year after year after year is like, how do you get the taper of the wood core to end up in this profile shape? that allows it so that the wood gives you that pop, that strength underfoot, but then it's going to be releasable, playful on the tip and tail. And each year that they iterate this thing, it keeps getting better and better. So yeah, there's no metal in this thing, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be that, that super binding, powerfully strong type of ski, but the wood, letting it breathe, letting that be the free ride, it's like essentially letting the wood play out. 
is, is a really cool feature of the, of the ARV. And on that free ride note, I think we all see skiers out there nowadays playing with mounting points. Armada actually specifies a couple different mounting points on the ski. So if you're looking for something more, you know, new age free ride, more progressive, you may choose to take that forward mounting point. Or if you're looking for something more traditional in a free ride sense, you may bump it back to give you, you know, a little bit more grip while carving through, exactly. through snow or, or what have you. So yeah, awesome to see that they're taking into account the different ways that skiers will ski this ski. Yeah, and then at an 18 meter turn radius, this thing's got that medium kind of left to right. Uh, it's gonna be long enough that you're gonna be able to make those long carving pow slashes, but also nimble enough to get left and right and to make those poppy kind of jump transitions when you're out there, so. You mentioned the tip and tail having a lot of rocker. I think Armada calls it smear tech. Yep. What does that do? What is smear tech? So smear tech, it's like that horizontal rocker or that, that platform, that spoon shape in the tip and tail. Um, again, that's gonna help you release when you're kind of transitioning from switch to, to forward or doing those nose butter type of moves. Um, it just that's soft, flexible, but doesn't fold over. It's not gonna bend on you. They've built that so that it transitions into that with the ski. It makes it super loose and fun and playful. And uh, yeah, the ARV comes in a women's model, the AR Dub. So ARW, that's that's the the women's equivalent of the ski, and and they both kind of play off that same platform, and they're they're both awesome free ride skis. Quiddy, again, who is the JJ for? This is for that free spirited free rider, the guy or gal who wants to just get out there and uh, turn the mountain into their own park and kind of have fun with it. It's uh, it's a ski for the skier, to be honest. Awesome. Well, that's the ARV 116 JJ from Armada taking our number one free ride pick. So we've talked through several different categories from carving, on mountain, all mountain, to powder and free ride. Now we're going to transition a little bit to something that I see as a ski that's more for someone that is looking for an approachable way to kind of test everything on the mountain and really bring you to that next level in your skiing. Yeah, these these skis are the skis that are gonna make you better, right? They're the the ones after you've like, you fell in love with skiing and you you maybe started with a pair of rentals or your brother's hand-me-downs, like now it's time to buy your first pair of skis. Like here are the skis that we're gonna, we're gonna show you that uh, would be the best first pair of skis. For our next category, we're introducing the new Rustler 9. Quiddy, let's dive in. Yeah, so the Rustler 9, it's one of my favorite skis for that skier who's trying to elevate their skiing. It's a, a ski that's gonna help you progress in a way that you're gonna learn something from it. The profile we've got with the Rustler 9 is slight camber underfoot, and then you've got this nice, early rising, soft tip and tail rocker. What that's ultimately gonna do is it's gonna give you enough camber to give you that feel when you press into the ski, the edge is gonna bite, but the tip and tail being the rocker that it has, it's not only gonna help it float in soft, softer snow conditions, but it's also gonna help the ski release in the turn. Like you're gonna be able to go into the turn, go out of the turn without feeling like you're caught by any means. Uh, the tail's not gonna grab, it's gonna release in a soft manner, which is super nice. The construction to this ski, you don't have a full sheet that goes across the tip and tail, but it's this Y frame. So you've got stability to the tip and tail, but it's not this full fledged, you're not locked in. So. There's a lot of feel and play with the So it's tail. stiffening up the ski where you want it to be stiff and still giving you that nice, clean and smooth release in the tip and tail when you don't want it to be locked in. Exactly. When we look at the waist, it's 96 underfoot. I've been seeing a lot of skis the past few years in this kind of all mountain category, hovering in that 96 to 101 realm. Like what is a 96 underfoot ski like and what's it best for? Yeah, what's nice about a 96 is that it gives you that versatility of you're not just locked into a super narrow waist width where you're just only stuck on cord and, and having to stay on the hard pack of the groomers. You can get off the groomers and get off piece. You can get into some softer snow. It's going to float a little bit more at 96 underfoot. It also has got some taper at a 96 up to a 131 and a 126 in the tail. So you're going to get enough float in the tip and tail that allows it to go into soft snow. 
And that 90 space is where I'm finding that the all mountain kind of core is, and it's going to give you that versatility. Also, if you're a, lear- a skier that's still learning or wants to improve your turn, you're going to be able to make those turns and feel like you're not just rolling the edge of the ski over. You're fully actually engaging the ski as you kind of come around. So it's at that really nice versatile 90 sub 100 underfoot. Yeah. I found myself last year, even considering the amount of snow we've had in the mountain West, skiing a 95 and 96 underfoot on many, many days just because of how versatile and approachable the ski is for all conditions on the mountain. Because yes, it snowed a lot, but you're not going to get a powder day every day. While we're talking about the Rustler 9, we should also introduce the Black Pearl. So the Black Pearl from Blizzard, which is the same brand as uh, the Rustler 9 over here, is one of our top selling skis in the women's lineup. It's an 80 and underfoot, and this is a ski for for the lady out there who, uh, again, is trying to improve their skiing, but it's extremely approachable. The ski is going to both support you or your progression as a skier, make you a better skier. If this is the first pair of skis that you're buying for yourself, uh, you're not gonna be disappointed. It's a fantastic ski. So from a construction standpoint, you're gonna get a really strong camber underfoot. You're also gonna get nice tip rocker and a little bit of tail rocker, but more of a flat tail here. The ski is made with materials that ultimately are gonna give the ski enough flex to it that it's gonna give um, so that when you're you're making turns left to right, it's gonna release. The ski is gonna allow that turn to come around, but it's also not uh, gonna be super loose and sloppy that you feel like you're not actually making turns. You're just kind of sliding left and right. You're actually able to ski the ski. And it's it's re- one of the really cool things that, that Blizzard was able to do when they designed the ski is actually make a ski that can both be approachable, but also can still carve yeah. like a monster. Sounds like they took the best of the Rustler 9 and tuned it to be, you know, more of your approachable entry to an all-mountain ski. Yeah, what's really cool about the, the brand Blizzard is that they approach all of their constructions of their skis with an intention um, they actually, for this model and a, and a number of their women's models, is that they bring women in-house and they, they have them design the skis and they ultimately let them be the ones that are going to ultimately speak to how the ski gets constructed, which is a fantastic thing that, that Blizzard does. So for the last two in our guide this year of our top picks, the Rustler 9 and the Black Pearl, last time I'll ask you, who are these skis for? These skis are for the person who's looking to buy their first pair of skis, to be honest. Um, I think you could take a chance on something else, um, but if you're really believing in that skiing is for you and you want to progress, you're going to have a ton of fun on these skis. They're going to give you what you want. You're going to feel like you you made a great investment here because they're going to they're going to keep progressing with you, and ultimately they're going to deliver in in all the conditions that you're asking them for. Amazing. Well, we've got a fun lineup for you guys on backcountry.com this year. So if you like this, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any other questions about these skis or others, reach out to your gearhead. And if you are interested in seeing an on-snow review of these skis or any others that you find on backcountry.com, leave a comment below. Thanks, and we'll see you out there.